Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nyambura and this is 100 on Books. Today I am <laughs> not in my house and um, I went to my friends to basically hunt for the internet and I was like, hmm, might as well record this week's video because when will I have the internet in my house? He did for me. Anyway, enough of my complaining. This is another reason. Treats, if you see my hands on the front, it's because my computer is in front of me and <laughs> so are my hands. So, here we go. First up, When Aiden Became a Brother by Kyle Lukoff and illustrated by Kaylani Juanita Juanita. This is a really charming picture book about Aiden, who's a trans boy and his parents have another child on the way and he's trying to figure out what it means to be a good brother to like essentially sorry to be you know a great sibling and um to do things right and yeah so we go through his journey and it's also nice to just as an older sibling to see a child grapple with what it means to be an on an, an, an older to be older than someone else to be their older sibling um but also to have parents say hey you know like there's no perfect way to do this and we believe in you and you're going to do a good job it was just really sweet and honestly i feel like it broke this fever i was in because for a while i just could not read like i didn't seem to be able to finish books yes 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 <laughs> my reading slump comes up again <laughs> but yeah that was a lovely book and i'm very glad i picked it up i think i picked it up during the we stand with trans kids um tag when it was going around on twitter i mean I, on youtube it still is but i haven't participated yet i think this is a great book to pick up but wait there was actually a tweet that led me to it and i'll put the tweet down below the next book I read was Oxy by Mari Ahokoivu and translated by Celia Maria Aronpuro. This book is so wild. I honestly do not know how to explain it. So I'm almost definitely just going to say one sentence and keep it moving. There is a bear, uh, a mother bear who has, you know, like a bunch of cubs and this other cub that's not really a cub. I can't quite explain it and total hijinks and so these like these magical creatures these um that one cub that's not a cub think ugly duckling but it's not even in the cub family it's something else entirely and um yeah like it's struggle to be accepted and what happens because of that but also all the other shenanigans that are happening because it turns out the mother bear has this history that even she does not remember. I honestly, I'm not going to do a good job of explaining what's going on in this book, but it's like based on an old Finnish bear myth and so on. And yeah, um, it was quite an experience. Like I picked it up because it was a graphic novel, I think on the NPR list. Yes, the NPR list comes like comes up again and i enjoyed it I, I i did except i was a bit confused at times i don't generally go in for myths and so on so it can be a bit tough for me to be honest so i renewed it a few times at the library before i finished it but i can't say i didn't enjoy it then um the next one was training school for negro girls by camille Aka. And I listened to the audiobook that's narrated by Bunny Tappin and Janina Edwards, both of whom are audiobook narrators that I like. And I say this because, to be honest, this book, it did not give what I thought it was going to give. I stuck with it because I love the narrators. And I think this is something that people who enjoy audiobooks uh, can attest to. There are books which you borrow because you like the narrators, and it turns out you also like the story. And then there are times when you're like, I re I'm really enjoying listening to these people, so I'm going to keep going. And um, this was one of the latter. It's a collection of short stories um, that 
center black women living in the Washington DC area in the United States and the various experiences and so on they were very hit or miss and sadly most of them were not memorable like I finished this book what maybe a week ago a week and a half ago and I can only tell you maybe about two stories whose titles I don't even remember and that's not a great thing so I'll keep it going but as I said Bunny Tapping, Janina Edwards fantastic fantastic narrators highly highly recommend their books no I highly recommend their voices sometimes you know the books don't live up they don't live up to the voices to be honest um the next book was the vagina bible the valve and the vagina separating the myth from the medicine by jennifer gunter this was um, part of what became like an almost not almost, it became an unfiction run for me. It was the beginning of my unfiction run. While I'd been reading this book for a while, listening to it for a while, this is the week I finally finished it. And yeah, so Gunther takes us through, Dr. Gunther takes us through like all of these different parts of um, the anatomy of people who have like uteruses and the vulva and the vagina and how to take care of them how to like spot certain ailments, how to deal with them, and also some of the myths and ideas that a lot of people who have grown up with vaginas have been trained in, you know, like that it's dirty, that it needs constant maintenance, that, um, that one must shave, that one must do this or that. And so as the title suggests, she really just separates the myth from the medicine and yeah it's a very informative book um probably the sort of thing that would be handy to have around um if you or people you love have a vagina and then the next book was sometimes i trip on how happy we could be by nicole parkins narrated by nicole parkins i don't know if i mentioned that the vagina bubble is narrated by the author and um this is a collection of essays in which Nicole Parkins basically like it's a I want to say like a memoir in sorry essays sorry um and um yeah I mean it's a memoir I always find it hard to talk about memoirs because like if I say it did not burn like okay but are you trying to say I mean like is your life so interesting that if you if you did a variation of this it will burn like let's talk about it um she talks about sex a lot and people have some people have mentioned this on goodreads i'm not squeamish by any stretch of the imagination like i'm a grown-up uh but at some point it was like we get it you have slept with white men and i guess maybe it's also like a feature of living in the u.s where like statistically you're going to encounter um white men um but yeah i don't know uh and also for instance there's some talk of her being a mistress and a huge part of it is basically like discovering herself through like sexual exploration and all that but cheating is always a bit of a tricky subject for me like i know that it can be written really well and you're like mm, i see the point but i generally struggle to see the point so there we go um next was mrs wolf and the servants by alison light um mrs wolf and the servants the hidden heart of domestic service by alison light i picked this up because somebody mentioned it on twitter usually when somebody mentions something on twitter i will quote the tweet so i will put it in the description box below and she was like well if you're uh if you're um What's her face? If you're a Virginia Wolf stan, maybe stay away from this book. And I was like, I'm not a stan. I can go in. And yeah, I, it feels almost like two books. One book is about Virginia Wolf, her writing, the way she treats domestic servants in her writing, but also how she treated her own domestic servants. So that's one bit. And the other bit is a bit like the evolution of domestic service in the UK 
pre-war, like before World War One, going into the war, pe- the war period, the interwar period, and so on, and like the changing social and economic status of especially women but like of the working class in relation to domestic service so it was like two books and um as with a lot of books that feel like two books one usually suffers <laughs> in the face of the other let's be honest so that kind of happened here like at some point i was like mm, go back to the sociological examinations miss light like I am no longer interested in what Tower Virginia has to say. Uh, but it was interesting. Like, at some point, I think my mom was just tired of me being like, and then Virginia said, and then blah, blah. And then it turns out in England, etc, 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 etc. Um, but also, part of the reason this book was so interesting is because it felt so familiar. Like, uh, this obsession with having, say, domestic stuff, wear uniforms, and basically, like, be debased in certain ways that i see even in nairobi where i live we are like somebody will have one domestic servant one and will be like wear uniform to be uniform is whomst you know like it's just a way to assert their social status and it does not sit right with me it does not so anyway um yeah so it resonated on on a lot of levels and, and i enjoyed it um then this the next one actually was unladylike yeah unladylike even though it doesn't come fast (laughs) i'm looking on goodreads if you're wondering what i'm looking at in the background so unladylike a field guide to smashing the patriarchy and cleaning your space by kristen conga and caroline uh, caroline arvin who also narrate the book Mm, uh this the title unladylike comes from their podcast which is also called Unladylike. Like. And um yeah, I I listen to the podcast on and on. I'm gonna be honest, like I haven't listened to podcasts in a while and I also feel a bit iffy about um like feminism TM as preached by white women because sometimes they have some blind spots and a bit of it is left like mm. Mm. for instance, I'm recording this on the Saturday after um Roe v. Wade was overturned in the US by the US Supreme Court and um of course there's a certain conversation that's being had by anyone who's interested in reproductive health rights anywhere in the world but I feel like there's a certain anxiety that comes with being white and a feminist and American uh, that shows up in the media they produce and in the statements they make and so on that can sometimes be very cringe anyway let's go back to this book so it tags itself as a funny fact-driven and illustrated field guide to how to live a feminist life in today's world from the host of the hit and ladylike podcast and yeah there are lots of you know quirky little moments and it it's it's very visual even the audio version is very visual uh in the sense that you can tell that this is like an info box those of us who read certain textbooks you know what and you know exactly what i'm t- talking about like this is a box this is information that's in a box this is information that's like in bold and so on and so forth but the, one of the biggest drawbacks for me was that it's designed to be read side by side with a pdf and that doesn't feel like a natural way to read to listen to an audiobook it's like famalam i am washing dishes i am walking like am i supposed to pull up this pdf like i'm sorry it sounds like a hater but am i supposed to pull up the pdf quick also if you get this from your library it does not come with a pdf so basically i went rooting about the internet for this pdf and let me tell you something i did not find it i did not find it um so on some level, it's like, mm, did you all have to do all this? Like, it's full of infographics and all of that stuff. And there's somebody on Goodreads, actually, who commented on this. And they said, if you're a blind audiobook listener, some of the things that the book is supposed to give you, you are not going to get because it depends on this visual aid. You know, um, so yeah, they talk about, you know, like statistics, some social justice principles, talking about like how to, you know, navigate relationships, money, friendships, which are relationships, but you know what I'm saying, um, how to um, navigate politics, etc. 
yeah it's really a field guide it reads very much as feminism on one like honestly if this is not the beginning of your feminism journey you know you can pass it up for something else to be honest like you're not missing out on anything but yeah the book is cute i looked up the the ebook i looked at it just to see what it looked like it's nice it it looks nice so you know that's something you could read the next one of those as i said like i went on a like marathon of <laughs> non-fiction reading and the next was my name is why by lem cc i found out about this book because i read a really interesting article about adoption in the uk and this particular lady who adopted an older child by older i think she was six when she was adopted which in a lot of countries that's an older child as is the case also in Kenya, this is significant because I myself um, am in the adoption process, like, um, like I'm at the start of what is not a short adoption process um, here in Kenya. And generally, a lot of the children being placed for adoption are, you know, infants. They are two and under. And so being an older adoptee stands out. Anyway, so that article led me to my name is Y by Lem CC. I'll see if I can post the, the link to the article downstairs just to give you a sense of sort of what the British adoption process is like because in a lot of sense, in, in a lot of ways, it mirrors the Kenyan experience. Hashtag colonialism, hashtag commonwealth, hashtag English laws before 1960. Anyway, so Lem CC was um, taken from his mother basically at birth and placed with a white family. Lem himself is of Ethiopian descent. And he was placed with a white family, which when he was 12, turned him out. And he ended up going into a number of foster situations, a home, a group home. And then he, before he turned 17, he was put in what was essentially a juvenile detention center that masqueraded, masqueraded as like a youth center. And it was pretty horrible. Like the uh, abuse that's, that, that, happened in that place it's called woods end was atrocious like it was the sort of thing like you need a a stomach of iron and to not be in a teary mood if you're going to read some of the things that happened there and then at 17 they turned him out and revealed all of this information about him so over time he was able to reconnect with his birth mother and so on um but yeah like it's just really heart wrenching, and as I said, like for me as a person who hopes to be an adoptive parent, one of those things has been to think about the trauma that comes with adoption. To consider the fact that um, what might be a happy moment for you as a parent, like having a child in one's life, becoming a parent, if this is the first child who you're parenting, and so on and so forth, uh, might be the source of tremendous trauma and you know, like separation and um f not just for the child but also for the family that they were born into and yeah i mean it's also like the format is really interesting because lem cc includes a bunch of um official documentation from his time in the care system basically from the time he's placed in the system till the time he leaves the system at um, 17 and a little while longer when he's just starting you know like an, an independent life for himself and so on and those documents do a lot of work because i think it's one thing to talk about one's experience and it's another thing to talk about what official dom does but th he brought on this level of basically showing us the intersection of um, these decisions made by people in excuse me in official positions and the lived experiences of people whom those decisions are affecting so it is a very affecting book actually uh, then i read clash of civilizations over an elevator in piazza vittorio by amara lacus and translated by Anne goldstein who if i remember correctly is um is the one that's translated the neapolitan novels why am i forgetting the author of those books I'm just gonna uh, Neapolitan. Why can't I remember the author of the books? Neop yes, I posed to search them. It's Elena Ferrante. <laughs> it's probably someone who's like, 
couldn't remember Ferrante's name. And um, I could see the covers. I even could remember that they are called the Neapolitan novels, but I could not for the life of me remember the author's name. Yikes, my friend, yikes. Anyway, so this is a social commentary meets media mis uh, media mystery. Murder mystery. Media mystery. Murder mystery. So this um all the characters in this um story live in one building, the Piazza Vittorio, and uh one of the neighbors whose name is the gladiator, who's called the gladiator, has been found murdered. And everyone is trying to figure out who murdered him. The chief suspect is this man called Amadeo, um, who is like this chill dude who everybody in the neighborhood gets along with. This is outstanding because these people do not like each other. I mean, like the Northern Italians do not like the South Italians. They don't like the immigrants. They don't like people do not like each other. And okay, not just people who live in the building, but also people who live in the general neighborhood, right? So we we shift between each person in this general area talking about um the murder but also like their relationship with amedeo generally and then amedeo himself and basically like his journal entries or like his musings or something i can't quite tell you what they are i'm going to say they're his journal entries so we shift and in the process experiences like um i'm going to say they're like commentaries on italian life as i said like the northerners don't like southerners, southerners don't like northerners, and there's much to be said about that, but also like uh, the question of immigration and popular and unpopular views on immigration and so on and so forth. And then the murder mystery is not really integral to the story. I don't quite remember how I picked this up. It was someone on booktube, someone who reads a lot of translated literature. And if I remember who it is, I'll put a link to the video below. But, um, yeah, I mean, on some level, it was like, we get it. You're here to make some social commentary. And I don't think I knew going in how much that would be a significant feature, but I didn't mind it. And, yeah, it was pretty interesting. It, um, the way the mystery is solved was just like, uh, okay. <laughs> I never expected it, but, like, that's maybe the point of a murder mystery, isn't it? Um and yeah i mean i think if you're thinking about like immigration and what it means to be an immigrant but also like these social ideas of of na nationality the kids in the background i live in a society nationality um immigration status and so on and so forth it treats like a very anthropological text which makes sense because the author is trained as an anthropologist um, then this is probably a book you would enjoy then um, I want to say the last book yeah the last book as of this recording is Confessions of an Alleged Good Girl by Joya Goffney whose first book excuse me while I ugly ag I cry <laughs> whose first book excuse me while I ugly cry I really enjoyed and this follows a girl who's a preacher's daughter who is trying without much success to have sex with her boyfriend. And after 25 odd attempts, um, this boyfriend is like, forget you. And, um, and I mean, like, She's had broken, of course, because they've been dating for two years. Um, she honestly thought he was the love of her life and all of those things. And this dude has basically been like, yeah, we've had multiple attempts. And this doesn't seem to be working. You know, you don't seem to want me like that. Uh, goodbye. Anyway, so she's feeling, you know, some type of way. And she tries to get help. And she ends up getting help from a very unlikely source uh this church girl who she actually kind of loathes <laughs> um and a guy who has been 
put you know like who's who her father has taken under his wing because you know like he's a troubled teen or whatever and they turn out to be really fun kids it's just that she's never been in a in a context in which she would have to actually interact with them like to not resent the church girl and to not be you know like to not hold the troubled teen tm at arm's length and she has a lot of fun with them and she has a chance to question herself her ideas about you know her family um her upbringing her notions of sexuality and physicality um to also get treatment for this physical inability to have sex but as i'm saying especially to ask herself who she is like is it so important for me to have sex how else can i express how i feel about a person who i like other than you know their let's be honest because this is a heterosexual seeming girl uh, other than their penis getting into my vagina and um and that that exploration of what 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 it means to be in a relationship what it means to express one's sexuality what it means also to do this within a context when there are all of these strictures that have been placed and all of this like fear mongering that means that you are almost afraid of your own body as in one is almost afraid of one's body but also um yeah like in asking herself who she is she really gets a chance to interrogate the relationship she had with her ex-boyfriend yes the one who broke up with her <laughs> because she couldn't have sex with him and it was just really powerful as a as an old <laughs> i'm almost double her age as an old to see a teenage girl have the moments which yeah sometimes i wish i had had earlier you know like get to that point where you're like hey is this relationship a good fit for me does this person treat me with respect and kindness like am i the person i i want to be when i am with this person am i being honest with myself am i being true with myself am i being honest with the people who i am in relation with and so on and so forth like it's a really 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 good book like i'm so happy that the kids have this at their disposal um to read because chef's kiss yeah that's all the recent reads i'm hoping to read like some prize um uh stories the commonwealth prize and the cane prize stories and hopefully do a video or two about them so this will be the last reason treats for a while but i also like this format where i get to talk about a few books instead of just one or two um a bit long a bit on the long side but hey we all know i like to talk uh yeah so thank you so much for watching thanks for you know sticking around subscribing all the comments and all the good stuff and please like share subscribe comment etc etc and i'll be seeing you soon bye